Alright, hello, welcome to MTG Grinders. Uh, right now, you, Trent, hello. are about to open some packs at yeah. the, pre the pre-release. Yeah, so... Um, I'm oh, Lewis, by the way, and this is Trent. This is Lewis. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be asked um, to do a deck construction um, for the Dragons of Kataki, uh pre-release. I chose uh, Salunga, blue-black. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you chose Salunga? I actually didn't really have too much of an input as to what I wanted, um, but I just chose Salunga because that's two of my better colours. Blue-black yep. is two of my um, favourite colours, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much why, really. I started with... I think I had down as Collagon, but I did hear Yeah, I remember you talking about doing that one, yeah. A lot of people had wanted Collagon, so I just went, okay, well, I know there's a lot of Slumgar, so I'm going to just do that thing and, yeah, go in the favoured colours that I like to play. All right. Um, now, you've is that is that a Dragon Lord Slumgar? Yeah, I've got, I've, so I've opened some, like, yep. absolute bombs. Uh, I've got Dragon Lord uh, Slumgar. Thunderbreak Regent as my two rares from the packs. Uh, Hidden Dragon Slayer, which is like, in my opinion, one of the best rares in the set. Yep. Um, I did get uh, is it the seven cost four five flyer? Um, as you can see at the top of the black. Uh, I can't remember what his name was. Deathbringer Regent. Deathbringer Regent. Regent. Um, I wasn't overly happy to open him, but like he's fine. And then you see a Shore Crusher Elemental there. Um, so obviously my blue black is super super strong. Um, well, it's so it looks like with the bombs and things like that. Jeskai Sage. Um, what else have I got there? Uh, I got a couple of Sultai Scavengers, Alicia Vanguard, um, and the Sulfire Grandmaster as well, and the Triangle Cove, which is like really nice to have. So no evolving wilds, but. So at this stage, you're, are you looking at playing white as well as black blue? So I have no you're idea. Ha you're happy to see this land. Um, I think the blue white land is, is very good, but I like you can see me now. I'm just going through cards that I think I will and won't play are actually playable, are not playable. Like, is their strength level good enough for me to even warrant considering this card? Um, like, Frontier Mastodon, obviously, good card. Grim Contest is such a good card. Uh, maybe not as good now as things like Archer's Parapet and that have gone out of Khan's. But, um, like, cards like that just definitely go in, like, Display of Dominance, you see. Um, great sideboard hate and things for that. But I was pretty bent on the white just because I had uh, the Hidden Dragon Slayer. Um, so, and I'm pretty, like, I, well, I know I would end it up in, in the white. Uh, my red was very weak despite having... Uh, Thunderbreak Regent, the 4-4 four, four Flyer for 4, like probably, again, one of the best rares yep. you can open. Um, Dashing Warbrute, obviously very strong. Um, and Tormenting Voice is, you know, Tormenting Voice, it's if you want to play it, I suppose you can. It's not the best card, but it's definitely there. Um, it's, it's pretty good to be able to just um, say, I'm not going to play this colour, like just have a look at this colour. and just Yeah, well, it. obviously, yeah. obviously my green was like, pretty pretty ordinary when it came to like bombs and and good cards like i didn't get any i got a savage cup confrontation but i didn't get a, a hunt the week or a couple of the bolster two guys or just, just any of the generally solid powder toughness guys um so like a soul tie list wasn't really in the making from the get-go um but like you see the black here it's it's all just yeah. gas there's so many strong cards like very little um the stuff that i'm not happy to play um <coughs> just for the type i wanted to play uh the type of deck i wanted to play i knew i wanted to be a little controlling and a lot of your better rares are in these colors as well the oh, black blue and the white yeah absolutely um getting four on color rares uh was a four three on color rares and then having the Hidden Dragon Slayer, and obviously the Lifelink Bear as well, yep. in limited, a, like, well, Hidden Dragon Slayer is just a bomb. So, like I said, I was pretty happy to play that. Um, a couple of the 5-6 Defenders, which go straight out, I don't think I was uh, too happy with them. 
I was a bit torn about the uh, two two instant make a make one of you guys a four four flyer. Um, I didn't end up playing it, but uh, it was certainly a, que like a questionable card. What do you think about it? Um, Dance of the Skywise. I have I haven't uh, thought much about it myself, but. Uh, Robert was playing it in his deck, sure. and he was very impressed with it. I think he said it was his MVP. Sure. Um, I think, I feel like it's a very deck dependent card. Absolutely. But where it's good, it's very good. Yep. So you you notice actually here uh, in the white, I actually pitch out the three two fly for five with bolster for one. Um, what is that card called? I can't remember. No, nope, can't remember. But um, yeah, I ended up playing it in the whitelist because I needed a pretty, like a decent five drop and I didn't really have, I had double butcher I think in my pool. Uh, I even tactician. Oh yeah. Um, and I ended up playing it pretty, pretty wholeheartedly and actually, but it was actually good for me all day. So white's pretty strong. All right, so um, yeah, here we have you, uh, you're starting to lay out your deck um, on curve. Yeah, just as the deck, like, obviously the green and the red, they go straight away. I'm just not not even thinking about them. They're definitely the two weakest colours. Um, I do have a tendency to swing three colours, especially when drafting. Uh, but uh, I wasn't, and I also wasn't too sure if I could make the three colour iteration of these decks work um, with the minimal amount of fixing and stuff you get. All right. Um why, why do you, for, for the viewers at home, why do you set it out on curve? Um, I just want to get a feel for like how my deck actually looks, uh, as into, I suppose, just looks-wise, draw-wise, just getting the feel and the, uh, I suppose, generally good looks of the deck, if you know what I mean. Like, you don't want to have a, you don't want to have a, build a deck with seven five drops that are all bombs, not lay it out and not realise that Hey, I don't need two drops. I don't need three drops. Like I don't, I don't even interact with my opponent, so I'm just going to die. Yeah, you don't want to go into game one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But laying it out like this is very. I mean, it, it doesn't take that much time. You get to look at your curve, and you just you get you get all the information put out in front of you um, about what what your deck needs, what your deck wants, what you need, and what you want. Um, like I said, rather than playing all your favorite cards that. that the top end, you actually have no idea that you're playing, you know, bad low end because you haven't actually set it out. And that's also a point um, that you see uh, when people drafting online, uh, not online, sorry, well, I suppose online on Twitch when they're, you know, uh, in the day two of GPs and things like that, like finals, top eights, where after they open a pack, they do their 15 card draft and then they have a minute or two to, to review their picks. And you see them, and they, they put their deck, you know, five costs, four costs, playables, unplayables, yep. and they get a read for what they actually want to do. It's This is exactly the same thing. Except you've got a bit more time to do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yep. You've got more cards. You've got more choices. All right. Uh, now you're looking through, you look like, looks like you're looking through your red to see if there's anything worth splashing? or. Um, yeah, just looking through red and green, just yeah. like to actually have a look at, if there is anything more powerful than what I've got, um, obviously not. Just judging by the fact that, like, obviously I was going to play blue black. It would have to be pretty ordinary um, to play blue black, blue black. Uh, just sorry to not play blue black, um, but they're just not strong enough. The green and red were just there wasn't enough there. Um, yeah, white lends itself to, like I said, the hidden hidden dragon slayer is just. Like too good. Even if I was just going to play straight blue, straight blue black, I would have splashed for that. I would have tried to splash for that card because I think it's just way way too strong. All right. How did you decide to go how heavy um in each color? So that comes back to laying the deck out. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure over the course of this video you see me. So right now I have Esper. I think then I take out. I'll take out the white, and then so I'll have blue black, and then I'll take out the blue, and I'll have black white, and I'll see as to what I want to play in regards to power level and, and efficiency um, as to how much I want to play and how much I want to put my uh, my land base at risk from doing that. Um, my deck changes not quite substantially but a little bit 
um, throughout the course of the day as I did misread, uh, misjudge a few cards, which is the great thing about like these days where you actually get to play with multiple cards and things. Um, yeah, you don't have to register a deck list. Yeah, yeah. So the Shore Crusher Elemental down the, the three cost, three, three, morphs for, Mega Morphs for five, and is very similar to that of Aetheling yep. um, from Ravnica Block. Um, I, didn't, I didn't put it in my starting 40. Okay. I, I just I was not sure of it. Um, and then round two, I put it in. Uh, I took out... When did I take out? I can't even remember. I think it was the 2-3 discard a card. Black oh, yeah. guy, each, each, per, each player discards a card. Each player discards a card, yeah. yeah. I know that and, card, yeah. and it was just, every time I, every time I resolve Short Crash Elemental, I won the game. Were you morphing it most of the time? I morphed it every, well, I triple blue. Actually, yeah. I, I, against uh, Kyle in round five, um, he was also on Silumgar, so blue-black. Uh, he was So he was on a control list. I actually played it <laughs> as a 3-3 as a three, three for 3 blue, so it was pretty cool. Was this late game? or? Oh, yeah, yeah it was yeah, late yeah. game. Um, he was beating down with, like, at a Vulturous Avon, and I was attacking back with a Shambling Goblin or something or other. It was, like, trading life total, but... Like, I just resolved it, and, and one turn later he just conceded because he knew he just couldn't beat it. All right, so uh, you, you picked Tell Asylum Gar. Uh, what kind of commons and uncommons were you hoping to open from the new set? Um, the Vulturous Avon, I was really high on the list for. I'm a big fan of, like, things that say draw, draw two. Uh, and over the last couple of years of drafting, like, flyers, like, two, three flyers and things like that have been okay. Um, it just seemed like a really, really strong card. Um, Slum Guys Butcher was obviously uh, is obviously a very good card for commons and things like that. Um, a lot of the stuff I really wanted to open was for standard. Like I didn't really have too much precedence and like um, want about what I wanted to open. I just you know it wasn't like I was taking this ridiculously seri- ridiculously seriously. But you just wanted to save a few bucks down the line. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I suppose. I mean, yeah. you open you open bomb rares and you play with bomb rares and you get happy because at the end of the day, regardless of your standing, you have bomb, wear, bomb yeah. rares. So now I think I'm just I'm just doing a bit a few trimmings about things that I actually want to play, things that I don't, um, cards that I rate, cards that I'm not sure about. Um, I'm pretty sure there's still about forty cards up there, and I'm still in the three colors. Um, I was a little concerned about my top end, uh, as I wasn't sold on the fact that, like, of Acid Spear Dragon and Dragon Lord Silmgar to be my finishers. Like, Dragon Lord Silmgar, he was kind of, he, like, he was, okay, so he's a bomb rare and he's absurdly strong and you're going to pick him, pack one, pick one. But there was a few times in the day where I just didn't want to play him. I just, my opponent has cards in hand and I just don't want to play this guy because if I play this guy, I take that dude and he just dies then I just lose the game. Like, the game gets so hard for me to, to win. Yeah, um, actually, in one of the rounds that, that I played in, that was actually on camera, so uh, you'll be able to search that up if they're posted by now. Um, my opponent played a dra- Dragon Lord Salamgar, and I don't want to give too much away, but that was a very swingy moment for yep. the game. Yep. yep. Um, it was also pretty cool, because uh, against Kyle also had a Dragon Lord Salamgar, and he played his to take my my short crash elemental, and I had one blue, and I'm like, okay, that's fine, you can have it. And I untap, and I play my dragon lord Sungar, target his, sacrifice it to state based effects, and get my short crash el- <laughs> elemental back, and just like thumbs up all day. So there's that. It's pretty sweet. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, I was a little concerned about my my top end, um, which is why you see. Uh, even tactician all of a sudden come in um, because I needed something like that. Um, yeah, my top end actually wasn't like that gas. Sure, it's a rare and a mythic, but in sealed, like they can be overpowered pretty quickly. Like they're not the biggest cards, and like I said, the Deathbringer region I wasn't sold on. I didn't think it was that good, and it actually wasn't that good for me all day. Um, I just never wanted to play it and like rip my board apart. Like, I'm sure it's really, really good if you play it when your opponent has five creatures out. But like, it's going to be very linear that that ever happens, or that you allow yourself to get to that position and not be dead. Um, because obviously, like, it's limited. You want to play. You're going to play. Yeah. You're going to play a lot of creatures. You want to play like 
X creatures, <laughs> and I think I end up playing about 15, 16 creatures um, in the end of the deck. Uh, so you, just now you see me side, like pull aside the three cards I think are the most valuable for my sideboard plan, um, which is Exile, Target, Artifact or Enchantment for, for three at instant, uh, in case an ice and reducing stature. Um, they were all very good for me all day. Uh, I only bought a case of Ice in once, and that was against uh, Kieran, which you'll see in round one. Um, I didn't play any other green red matchups, which I was actually really happy about, as I've seen against Kieran, and you'll see as just the amount of pressure he was able to push on uh, onto me, and he just I just didn't have a lot of answers. Um, but yeah, so here I take out the the white, and I think, well, can I just play blue or can I just play blue black? Is it stronger? Is it more beneficial? And I immediately go, well, Hidden Dragon Slayer is just too good. And I just put him aside. He's just, well, no, I gotta play this guy. Um, and like he was, he was the best card in my deck all day. Like the amount of times I just blew people out just by activating his ability and just swinging for six, six point, six points life or life swing. It was just ridiculous. Uh, other cards to note, I suppose. Um, I didn't particularly want to play the Anticipate, but it made the cut every single time just because I was running three colours. I felt like I may just need that extra fixing. Um, the same reason applied to Sight Beyond Sight, the four cost rebound. Look at two, uh, the rebound uh, peer, peer through depths. Yep. Um, which did come out in the end. I didn't like it that much, although it was card advantage, it was kind of poor card advantage, and I felt like I be, could be doing better things with my mana. Um, uh, um, Sandcraft the Mage was like brilliant, as he always is. Um, Shambling Goblin was good, not great. Um, I had a uh, Dragon Hunter, is it? The one cost two one, Reachy, uh, Reachy Protection from Dragons? Uh, yep, the uh, Dragon not Dragon Slayer um, were you Dragon Hunter yeah Dragon Hunter um, so if you were heavier in white were, were, were you considering playing it? Uh, yeah so I, I changed my mana base a little bit yep. depending on um, what I would board in and board out like I'd always count my coloured permanents and see yep. if I needed to drop like an island for a uh, an island for a uh, planes and vice versa um See, the black whitelist actually looks quite strong if I just keep to splash in for uh, the Sulunga. Which uh, gets a bit easier if you've got that with that jewel land. Yeah, with the yeah. Tranquil Clove for sure. So this actually looks quite good, but I still feel like I can get more by playing the blue. Um, and like I said, eventually I do. Like, my curve is good here. And I was, I did want to play the, I think it's the Avon Sun Chaser, the. Three, three cost one one double striker with Megamorph. Yeah, even Sun, Sun Striker, I should say. Um, but I didn't really have the mechanic, like the Balsam mechanic on hand to make that guy absolutely just like delicious and just win the game off the back of him. Uh, and obviously if I'm going to play three colours as white being, I think it was my third colour, I'm, I'm just not, I'm just not going to play that card. Like you just can't play that card. I mean, I suppose, actually I lie, I suppose you could play it in the same... Respect that you play short crash elemental as mega morphs for only one white, so you probably could play that card. But honestly, I didn't think of it at the time because I only only just thought of it then. So, <laughs> so how do you think I'm I'm going in regards to like my path that I've taken? Do you see anything that you would uh, change um, up? Not not really at, not really at this stage. Like I think you're you're in the. Um, correct colours like how much did your bombs decide like your rare bombs decide your colours um well like I said like yeah. I said last said a million times uh hidden hidden dragon slayer is is like just the one of the best um and I really wanted to to play it because I just felt like it was my best card or one of my best cards um I didn't like I didn't have it start off with the short crash elemental in my deck but towards the end of the day it was like MVP outside of Hidden Dragon Slayer. Um, the Deathbringer Regent was a concession to the fact that I had no ball, like no big end game outside of Dragonlord and Dragonlord only has three toughness like the game is not going to end that 
quickly uh, with him. So I need something that can end the game, and he obviously answered that. And you can see, like at the top there, I've got Sig Sig Mock Draggers. That's um, the uh, delve. The delve, the delve, delve thing. Um, yep. and grave digger. Grave digger. The delve grave digger. Yeah. Um, I've played with him once or twice online um, when I was preparing for GP Auckland with the previous set, and he was actually really good. Yeah, I, I did I not found, like the other one, but I did do like this guy. I found that he's a pretty decent value card. Yeah, um, six toughness, gums the ground real hard, yep. and obviously you can see um, with this kind of curve, I've got five to six flyers. Um, so I can end the game that way and just have a huge body on the ground to block. Did he wind up in your main deck? No, no, okay. I did not end up playing him. Um, I don't I didn't think I... I had him as a sideboard option uh, in case anyone was like, okay, we'll put cards in your graveyard, um, which never actually became a thing, so I never boarded him in. But, uh, yeah, I suppose at the end of the day, the rares... The rares decided the fact that I was going to be in Esper, which... It, that's pretty much a concession to how I like to play anyway. Um, right now, I'm just trying to get my curve right. Just what's what's the best cards? What's the best power to toughness value? Um, how do I actually want to go about winning a game of Magic with this deck? Um, I'm interested to know what you prioritize in your non-creature spells. So, because you have a because uh, playing on seventeen creatures. <laughs> Give or take. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have much space to I play with. I generally don't like it too much, but, um, like, I have cards like Defeat, Pacifism, Sandblast, um, and I think Enduring Victory. All those cards just need to be played in this deck. Um, these cards just... They just remove things. Like, they just kill op opposing, op opposing players and opposing... Uh, flyers, especially in this deck. If I'm beating down with two threes and things like that, then I need to have answers for their flyers to actually win the game. Because I'm not going to win the ground war with this with this deck right now. Um, and like I said before, the Anticipate is a concession to the three colours. Um, and the Sight Beyond Sight is also a concession to the, to the three colours. And obviously, um, they are both powerful cards in their own right. Um, card selection and card draw are both... Uh, very good. I actually had a interesting theory about Gadol Lurker, the one one for one unblockable. Yep. What's uh, what's your theory? What's your thought on that guy? You think he makes a cut in this? Um, he's he's an interesting end game for the slower matchups. Mm. I think, um, like unless they've got a way to deal with it. Uh, it, it it's very it's very hard to say, but I think he's if. Like at this stage, it looks like blue is one of your lighter colors. Um, it'll say in this say this version, like you can morph him and uh, flip him up later on when you got more yeah, time. Yeah, the fact that he unmorphs for one blue is good, but I just don't like morphing a two two and then making it a two two, two, two. Yeah. unblockable for you know for four mana. It's kind of kind of costly. I, I, That's where I think, I I think he's. I think he's kind of slow most of the time. Yeah. But he, he, he's good where you want him to be, I suppose. Yep. Um, Alright, so now the curve seems to be looking more like something that you're, you'd be happy with. What kind of curve do you like? This is exactly the this kind of it? curve I like. I like playing grindy games of limited matchup where you get rewarded for making the correct decisions and um, just playing tight, tight magic, I suppose. Um, I mean, it, I never really... Drafted like the aggressive red white decks and cards and things like that because it's not my play style It's not what I actually like to do um, I mean if I'm gonna open like a, a, a bomb rare that says okay, we well, need to go hard Then I'm gonna go hard. I'm gonna try and go hard, but like I chose blue black for this um, because That's what I like to do. I like to play controlly grindy games of, ma of, of magic and This deck just lends itself to that and yeah, so I wasn't like when people ask me how I went after the after the deck building, um, it was a lot different from what I said at, at GP Auckland. So I said this was actually quite strong and I was happy to play this. Like I said it's not too bad and I, I knew that it was it was a good deck. Were you just afraid to have like a terrible pool that you couldn't do much with when you're building on camera? Um not particularly. Um, like I don't mind 
too much as to what I'm given. Uh, like I said, it's not like we're playing for sheep stations or anything like that. Um, I mean, it's a lot different to being past it at GP Auckland and, and pulling it out and being like, okay, cool, thanks, thanks guys, you know, <laughs> give it the thumbs up. But um, I suppose you always want to pull something good. Like, if it's not money, then it's, it's strength. Yep. And I was rewarded with both, really. I mean, I've got money, I've got money and I suppose Silumgar will be a couple of bucks. Sure, Crasher Elemental will either go up or down depending on how the format changes around him. Um, if the blue de devotion deck, yeah, if the blue devotion again, deck yeah. becomes a thing, um, I'm not sure as to how it's going to become a thing, but it could. Uh, yeah. And obviously, Soulfire Grandmaster, like there's a X dollar card, so um, yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. Um, All right, now now we can see you're working out your mana base. Um, now. In general, what do you have a formula or that you like to sort of run through to figure out how many lands of each type to go? Um, or where do you start? Your splash color or your heavy color? I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not too sure. I suppose I just get into get into a, like a position where I just know what I want to play and um, and and go from there. Like, but I think. The best way to do it is to obviously count count where you need the mana and count why you need the mana. So, say for instance, in this deck, I think I have about six white spells. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I have six white spells. Um, you've got one, and you got the one fixing land. And I've got one fixing land. Yep. Um, generally, want to make sure I can play the majority of these spells. So I want to look for at least six sources, and that's pretty or like that's pretty ordinary, but. Like, given the fact that this is a format with very little fixing, um, you kind of just have to go for it. So, I, I suppose I kind of, with the blue-black and the black-white list, I could have actually not played them and had a more consistent mana base. But with this, I'm going, with the three colours, I'm trading consistency for power, um, which means I have a more shaky land base. And I end up playing 18 land, um, a 41-card deck, uh, which is something that I generally don't like to do, but do find myself doing it a little bit, uh, especially in sealed, um, and especially when testing and stuff like that. Like, you don't get to, uh, sure, it's, sure, it's probably better to play 40 most of the time, but um, you don't get to practice. If you don't, if you cut that 40 first card, you don't get to play with it, and you don't get to see if it's actually good or not. So, when it comes to crunch time and competitive REL and you're building decks like this, you can actually pick up that 41st card and say, okay, well, I played with it last time and I actually have the experience to play with it and know that it's actually in the 40 and it's not the 41st card. So you, when you put submit your 40 cards, it's either in the deck because it's good enough or it's not. All right, and it's, it's pretty rare um, that you're looking at playing 41 cards there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, gen yeah you, never, you never just go, okay, well, this is a 41 card deck. Like, you never just go, oh, I have 24 massive playable cards. There's no, like, the, the, the lowest four cards in my, my pool are all on the same power level. I'm just going to keep them all in and play 41. No, that's not how it works. I don't think you're doing it correctly if you are. But uh, I think I end up with a 776 um, because of the Tranquil Cove. Are you more likely to emphasize your early drops when you're working out your land, land base? Uh, yes, yeah, you, the, I suppose this, this set and Khans as well, um, you did have morphs, so you could play off the fact that if you had a lot of morphs, you could maybe reap the benefits of very strong morph decks, which was like why the five colour decks were very strong, because they played a lot of morphs with a weak land base, but obviously you still had the dual lands to help it out. But, um, with this set, you've got to make sure that you get down on the ground early. I suppose that's a general rule for, for limited. Uh, yeah, just a general rule for limited. You do want to um, you do want to prioritize your early early drops. So you actually have some early game, um, and just try and be in front on the board, or at least be in contest uh, in contest of the board. Um, generally, doing nothing in Magic is the best way to lose. And control decks, like I mean, control decks in, in constructed are very strong because they can do nothing.
creature wise, but in limited you have to play creatures. You can't take twenty three spells and try and and go go with it because you won't get there. Right. How much does your strategy change on in a on a day like this where it's a brand new format compared to um, say like what Khan sealed would have been um, after a couple months as an example? Um, not particularly much, really. Um, I think it comes down to that. That just comes down to the player, uh, as to how you want to play your magic, um, and what cards you open. So it's all about your opinion and where you stand. Um, I mean, like I said, me as a player, I just want to play a grindy game of magic and and hopefully get there. Um, but with someone to say. Um, who can I say? Someone, for instance, like Tyler Halloran from MTG Grinders, um, he's known as an aggressive player. So he might, uh, he, he'll be probably, he'll probably adopt and go aggressive, especially in something like a draft, because he likes to do that kind of thing. If he sees that door, he's probably more optional to do it. So that all comes back to what you want to, like, what you want to come out of what you want to play. I mean, you, you, you're very similar to me in the ways of how you play. You like the grindy kind of mid-range control matchups, especially in your um, your draft and your drafts and seals. But if you open red, you're going to go red. Yeah. You know? But it, it, it all comes down to how you want to play it. So, and I think that's the same with everybody. And I don't think this set's changed the the colors that much. I mean, like blue black is still going to be blue black. You're not going to be lightning fast blue black. You're not going to be controlling red white. Yeah, it's very rare that you have that kind of deck where you're going to be drafting a two different strategy from yeah, exactly. the defaults. Uh, actually, another thing I haven't brought up was the exploit mechanic. That yeah. was sweet. I really enjoyed the exploit mechanic. I had some cool little interactions with Voltra Saven and like uh, Palace Palace Bird and yep. Jeskai Bro. Yeah, um, Je yeah Jeskai Sage seems a bit stronger in this set. He was great. He was yeah. really good all day. Like, I mean, Jeskai Sage has always been good. Uh, in limited, I think he's yep. been a <coughs> excuse me, like a quality uh, two drop, but um, yeah, in this like he was just really good. Um, yeah. Well, he he seems to work well with um, cards like anticipate. Uh, oh yeah, where, absolutely. Where you can, uh, use an anticipate yep. as a combat trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah And then right. in the late game, you can exploit it. Did you find you were doing that very much? Uh, I don't think I actually ever got the prowess trigger where it actually mattered. Okay. Um, but he was my only prowess guy in the deck, and he was there to die. Like he was there yeah. as um, to be fed to the bird. For how many? Three how many cards? cards? How many cards do you reckon you drew off that guy? Oh, every time I played him, he died, and I probably would have played him five or six times through the day. Um, so he was just really good. Um, yeah, he was just really good. Actually, uh, he's definitely gone up in value for drafting if you're yep. in this kind of mechanic. Um, because I mean, you don't care if he dies. Well, you, you do care, but not like not nearly as much as if it's another creature. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have something like a sand step outcast where you get the two one and the one one making value, um, and then being able to like exploit the one one token or the two one guy and still being able to maintain a little bit of value. Um, there's my there's my meandering tower shell. I was very <laughs> upset that someone decided to tell me that he was now dead. Um, as we all know, I, I did like the Dirtle Turtle quite a bit. All right, so this is the list you started with for the day. Yep. And you've changed it a couple times, but uh, it's, it remained pretty close to this, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I think it was only a three or four, five, maybe a five K card change up, but they're all very relative to either what I was versing or um, just a, if I needed a different power, like a power change up. All right, thank you, Trent. Thanks, guys. This has been MTG Grinders Sealed Deck Tech Dragons of Tarkia pre release. Bye.